Uh, hello again, my name is Daniel Call. I'm in Tokyo this evening. Uh, I was up in the north for, uh, I've made two trips to the north in the last couple of weeks, um, delivering relief supplies and things. Uh, and I've, I've seen a lot. It's, uh, it's still, it's a pretty rough situation in a lot of those cities up there. In fact, a lot of, a couple of those cities are probably never going to come back. But uh, the people who are planning on rebuilding their cities, they're, they're getting well, they're they're starting. Um, they're uh, they're just you know lots and lots of people up there cleaning up after the tsunami, trying to figure out how to rebuild their cities. Uh, but we still have um, a lot of problems up there delivering relief supplies. They're getting you know their basic stuff. They're getting rice. They're getting bread. And they're getting a little bit of meat. Um, but you know there's uh, some places that are getting enough and some places that are not quite getting enough so there's still you know a little bit of lack of information and some problems there uh, also I when I was up there I, I realized that um, they haven't had a lot of vegetables and fruit in the last uh, few weeks and this is beginning to affect their their health so uh, my next run up there will be with uh, vegetables and fruit and trying to deliver it to as many people as I can um, you know, not only the big evacuation centers, but the small evacuation centers, and in many cases, individual homes where people have taken on relatives or friends, you know, whose houses were destroyed. Um, it, it's still a really fluid situation, but um, there, there are armies of volunteers, both Japanese and foreign up there, just working, you know, uh, heroically to get, uh, to get as much help up there as possible. We're really working hard. Um, we have had a scary few days here in Japan. I'm sure you're aware we had a, uh, some very large aftershocks, if they can be called that. They were big enough to qualify as individual earthquakes. We had a magnitude 7.4 last Friday morning, of just, just after midnight. And we had another 7.1 yesterday and then a couple of sixes. Um, we, we've had all kinds of aftershocks all day long today. Um, and it slowed down work there at the uh, uh, Fukushima number 1 nuclear power plant. Uh, but they're getting back to it this evening. Um, that's good news. The bad news, of course, you're going to turn on your TV today and you're going to hear that they've raised the alert level or the accident level at Fukushima number one plant there from a five to a seven. Now, the only other place that has ever scored a seven on this, ski this scale uh, was Chernobyl in the former Soviet Union. Um, and so uh, the reason I'm telling you this is because, you know, I, they, they're already doing it again. They're comparing or they're, they're equating Chernobyl with what's going on at Fukushima. Um, everything I've read, everything I've researched, and I've done a lot of reading, you know, from the EIA, uh, I, AEA, excuse me, and the World Nuclear News and a lot of other sites. I've been reading about it all day long. Um, you, you need to back up what the people are saying on your radio and your TV and even in your newspaper with information right here that I'm giving you on these sites. This will give you some perspective on what's actually happening and also why the danger level was uh, raised a couple of points there. Um, this is not as bad as Chernobyl, at least not yet, and we hope it never gets to that point. Um, there are a lot of good in indicators saying or showing why it probably won't get that bad. Um, if it does, all bets are off, of course. But uh, I think if you take a look at these sites, um, it'll give you enough perspective so that you won't be overwhelmed by the, uh, the mass media today. Um, I can tell already from preliminary reports which are coming out, you know, today that they're going to make hay with this. They are really going to have a good time raising their ratings today uh, by scaring the heck out of everybody around the planet. So, you know, again, keep it in perspective. Uh, you're going to have to read some kind of technical stuff here to keep it in perspective. Don't let them feed you, spoon feed you a bunch of mind candy and scare you to death. Okay. Read these, read the papers that are on these sites, um, get some perspective and, um, you know, don't let yourself get sidetracked, okay? The real problem in Japan right now is not just around the nuclear plant. It is up north where people are still having a hard time. Fortunately, the weather's getting a little bit better, and that's good, but we're, uh, it's going to be a long, hard slog. So please continue to think of Japan and pray for Japan. Thank you.